Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Game Maker for Beginners. In this week's episode we're going to look at how to make a Frogger clone. That's Frogger, the classic 1980s arcade game that we can see playing here in the background. Where the player's aim is to get across the road without being mown down by the traffic. Um, and they do that by jumping on the backs of stuff and avoiding the lorries. What we're going to look at today is how to set up our basic gameplay and do the lorries segment of the game. So first of all let's load up Game Maker and have a look at Game Maker. So in Game Maker all I've done is I've made two very very simple sprites. I've made a truck sprite which as you can see here is pretty lame and I've also made a frog sprite uh, which is an amazingly high definition frog uh, which looks very very similar to a green circle so some very simple sprites but what we're going to look at today is the gameplay element of creating our frog game so let's get started so we've got our two sprites very simple the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make our frog itself now the frog moves in a slightly different way to other games and we use the up and down or the WASD keys to move it and if we press right it will jump a specified distance to the right so rather than holding down the key and it just kind of moves um, free um, it will jump a specified amount with every press of the button so first of all let's make a new object so go down to objects click create object and remember objects are the interactive elements within game maker that make up our game world so these are the interactive objects they can be the player the enemy exploding barrels the key card you pick up anything that's interactive that we can we can use to change the game so we're going to create this object and we're going to call this object frog and I'm going to call it underscore object so frog object I'm going to set the sprite that I've already made for my frog which is this green one here by clicking the little blue drop down menu and selecting frog and the first thing I'm going to do is set up our movement within our frog so remember there's two parts to any object there's events and there's actions think of these as kind of action and reaction kind of cause and effect so our event which is the first thing we're going to add in our keyboard button so I'm going to press key press over here and we'll do left and key press right key press up and key press down so we've got four events we've now added to our, our frog object and let's go and click the top one press left so it's hollow blue and under the actions this is where we're going to set the movement head over to the right hand side of your screen and underneath the jump sub menu of the move tab over here you'll see a green arrow pointing towards a yellow dot and if you hover your mouse over it you'll see it says jump to position let's drag jump to position over onto the actions okay we'll see it brings up a little pop-up menu now as this is the left key what we need to do is tell game maker that when we press the left key for our frog object it needs to jump 32 pixels to the left. Now, Game Maker doesn't work in left, right, up and down. It works in the X and Y axes, like on a chart. Okay, so Y axes are the vertical axes, that's up and down in your game, and the X axes are left and right in our game world. So, if we want to move left when we press left key, we need to change the X axes, our left and right axes, our horizontal axes. So, I know that if we want to jump 32 pixels to the left in our game, then we need to set the jump to position X axis to minus 32 because we want to go minus 32 over this way. <coughs> the axes in Game Maker work on a plus minus kind of scale, with 0 being the dead center of your screen, minus on the left or above, and plus on the right or below. So, I know that we want to go minus 32 on the x-axis and we need to click relative and what that means is when we type in minus 32 jump to position x minus 32 and y0 it will take wherever we are the relative position from where the player currently is and move us 32 pixels to the left so click ok now let's do it for the right as well now to save time we could copy that but I'm going to click press right I'm going to drag jump to position over again this time we want to press right, so if I know that 0 is dead center and then the x axis is left to right, I need to once again change the x box here to 32. This time it's plus. You don't need to type the plus. If there's nothing in there, plus or minus it, let's assume it's plus. And once again, tick relative. And what we're saying there is when we press the right key, jump 32 pixels to the right and stay exactly where we are on the up and down scale. Now let's do the up one. 
once again click up under the events then drag over we'll jump to position and this time we're not going to press the X, change the x-axis we're going to change the y if we want to go up it's minus 32 and this will jump our player 32 pixels up and tick relative because we want it to be from where we were and click down on the events and drag over jump to position again and this time change the y to 32 and make sure we tick relative again perfect okay if you click ok now we've got a frog that we can move up down left and right let's create a room to put our frog in and give it a little test so on the left hand side under the taskbar go to rooms right click rooms and go create room let's full screen that so we can see clearly what we've got I'm going to use my middle mouse button to zoom in and out there and reposition first of all I'm going to set the background of my level to a nice horrible deep green and let's go to the objects tab over here click on the objects tab on the picture select your frog object and just drop them in anywhere there we go and click little tick let's preview this now so I'm going to click the little pl green play button up the top here and this will compile a quick demo of the game we've just made now it's very very simple so there we go we can see on the screen we've got our little green frog there we've got the background we've just made now if I press up fingers crossed the frog should move up by 32 pixels ah there we go if I press right it should jump to the right by 32 pixels press down it should jump down by 32 and left by 32 there we go and now there we go wonderful just like Frogger Frogger jumped a set amount each time and that's what makes it difficult is you've got to try and get across before the trucks get you and stuff so there we go so we've got our frogs movement all set up now why don't we add in our truck so let's close down our little test and let's make another object remember the objects the important part of game maker they're the interactive part of the game so right click objects go create object and I'm going to call this one truck obj set the sprite down here by clicking the blue button select your truck sprite whatever that is and what we're going to do now is we're going to create a truck that moves to the left so what we want to do is we want to add a create event under the events click add event and then select create this means that whenever the truck is created do whatever action is over here and the action we want is we just want this to move to the left so I'm going to drag across this green arrow over here click the left arrow so that's highlighted red so this is the direction that we want this object to move in when it's created and we'll set the speed to five or something there we go wonderful so we've got our truck objects there and I'm going to rename that truck object and we'll call it move left wonderful so what this means is we now got a truck object when the objects first created it's going to start moving in a direction we also want to add in another thing here we want to add in an event that says if we go outside of the game level then destroy the object so I'm going to go add event other outside room and what this means is when we go outside of the game level and we want this object to jump back to where it was at the start so if we go outside room select move and there we go jump to start for self perfect there we go lovely stuff so now what we've said is we've got a truck when the truck's first created move towards the left at a speed of five when it eventually gets outside of the level out the room then return to where you started and it will repeat that process over and over again let's give that a little test shall we so go into your rooms sorry I should say go into your rooms go to your object tab select your truck and just drop them in there drop, drop a couple in there make it difficult there we go now let's preview that and hopefully what should happen now is when the game level starts the truck starts driving towards the left hand side of the screen when it goes off the screen it returns to where it started and starts again there we go perfect wonderful and my job as frogger is to get across however there's a problem here if my frog is in the way it just keeps on going and nothing happens that's because we need to tell the game that if the truck hits the frog then the frog dies we've also got another uh, less obvious problem and that I've made my trucks reverse here so that's something else we need to have a look at and we'll fix that quite easy as well so first of all though let's set it so that 
If the frog hits the truck, then the frog dies and the game restarts. Let's go into our frog object. And what I want to do now is add an event and this is going to be a collision event. We want to say when the frog collides with the truck. So navigate to the collision submenu, give that a click and select the truck object that you've just made. Now what we're saying is right when the frog hits the truck, so collision with truck object, what I want to do is restart the game level. So let's go down to main one tab over here. Underneath here you see you've got the rooms men rooms options and submenu. What I want to do is hover your mouse over this third one that's restart room, drag that over. So when the frog hits the truck, the room restarts. The game restarts, the level restarts essentially. Let's click OK. Let's go back up to this little preview green play button up here. Let's run the game and let's see if that's worked. And we'll just wait while it compiles. It shouldn't take too long because it's a nice simple game. So we've got our trucks. We've got our frog. He can move around. Or she can move around. Let's wait for the truck to hit us then. Ah, there we go. And the game restarts. Wonderful. It's very easy at the minute though, isn't it? He said dying twice. Okie dokie. Perfect. Excellent stuff. Let's change those trucks then so that they point in the right direction as they're moving. I'm going to do some very, very simple code for this one. Okay. So double double click your truck object and what we want to do is we want to add in a step event. So go add event, step, and then select just step. Now, Game Maker uses a coding language called GML, Game Maker Language. And that's what we're going to do today. So head over to the control tab over here on the right and you see there's a little section called code. Drag over the first icon which is execute code. The code you're going to want for this and you have to be sure that you type this out absolutely correctly otherwise it won't work is image underscore angle equals direction. And what we're saying there is the angle of our image should be whatever direction we're moving in for every single millisecond of the game. The step event that we've just used here is an event within Game Maker where it will check every 25th of a second whatever is in here. So every 25th of a second it will do whatever is in the actions tab. So every 25th of a second Game Maker is going to make sure that whatever direction we're moving in that's what way the, the sprite is facing for the truck. So the angle of the truck. Let's see if that's worked. Let's preview that. If I'm right now then the blue truck front should be facing towards the left of the screen. And it is. Huzzah! We have a victory. There we go. Wonderful. Okie dokie. So let's make it a bit more interesting now, shall we? Okay, so let's close that off. At the minute, it's quite easy to get across that road because all the trucks are moving in the same direction. It doesn't require as much skill. So let's change that. Let's make a second truck. Okay. Right click your truck object you've made and duplicate that. Call this something similar so truck object move but this time instead of move left I want to call it move right and the only thing we can do different this time is under the create tab double click start moving direction untick the left direction tick the right direction so tick the right arrow here untick the left one tick the right one so now the right one is orange tick OK OK and another thing we can do if we tick OK for that, go into our room and now let's, under the objects in your room, select the move right truck, use your middle mouse wheel to zoom out a little bit, and let's pop a couple of these trucks in there, just messing with our frog. And I'm also going to move our frog over a little bit so it's got a bit more time before it gets squished. Click tick. So now, what we've done there is we've made some trucks that are going to move towards the right as well as trucks moving towards the left and that's going to increase the challenge for our player and make it much more difficult for them okay so I'm going to preview this game now we should be able to see oh 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 ah yes but we've got one problem when we hit the trucks moving towards the left we die and the game restarts but the right ones they do nothing that's because we need to go into our frog object and tell it we've got to a new collision so go into your frog object Remember we made that collision with the truck object where we said if the truck that's moving to the left hits us, we restart the current room. We need to do exactly the same now for the new truck we've made that's moving to the right. Now you could go into add event, collision, 
truck moving right, restart the room, drag it over. Or if you've already got something that you need to just essentially copy and change the, the event, you can right click the event in question. So I know that what we need to do is the same for this collision over here. So I'm going to right click it, go duplicate event, set collision, truck moving right. And you'll see it's just copied that over exactly the same. Oh, and there we go. You see when that truck hit me, I died. Oh my lord. It's too hard now. There we go. Perfect. There you go. Now, let's start spicing it up. So let's make the gameplay a little bit harder. Let's add in some blue trucks to move a bit faster. So what we're going to do for that, we are going to make a new object this time. First of all, yeah, new object, great object. Call it blue truck. Fast, I'm going to call mine. We're going to set this sprite to the truck again. We're going to add event click create and what we're going to do with the create event we're going to tell it to recolor our sprite so under create go over to sprite which is under the main one sub menu and drag over color sprite and let's change that sprite to a nice blue color lovely then what we're going to do we're going to go add event and we're going to go oh no no in our create event even i'm going mad Go to your move option. Let's set moved fixed. Once again, we'll click to the right, but let's set the speed a bit higher. So set the speed to nine for this one. So what we said is we've got a new truck, blue truck. When we create the truck, make it blue, make it move towards the right at a speed of nine. Now we're gonna add an event save. We go outside the room, jump back to where we started. So go add event, other, outside room. So when we're outside the room, once again, drag over that jump to start icon, which is under the move tab, under jump, and it's that little green arrow with a yellow object. Jump to start, click OK. Perfect. Now, let's click OK. Let's go into our frog object, because we need to say if the blue truck hits us again, we need to restart the room. So select any of your truck objects that we've already got the collisions over here with the truck objects. Right click any of them, duplicate that event, click collision, and then click blue truck fast. So now when the blue truck hits us, it should restart the room. Now, go into your room, over here, go to your objects tab in your room, click blue truck fast, place that truck somewhere. Now I'm gonna place it, I'm gonna get rid of this one in the middle over here that's already there. So, hang on, let's delete that blue truck. First of all, let's delete one of these other trucks out of here. So right click it with your mouse and click delete. Then select your blue truck, drop that in, click the tick button. Let's click play and see if that works. The colour might not have worked, I might need to add that to the draw, the draw event. Ah, it's worked. Ah, there we go, so we've got our fast truck. And that makes it harder for the game because we've added in a new element there where I have to react at quicker speed there. Good, but it's still not too hard. I was able to get through that quite easy. Oh, he said dying every single time. There we go. Perfect. There we go. So we've got a very simple working prototype of Frogger. Now, what we need to do now is add kind of an end of level object because obviously the frog's got to get to safety. So you need some kind of respite. So, what we'll do there is if we click the X button, let's go into our room. Let's make it a bit bigger because at the minute it's quite small, isn't it? So, go into our room settings and change the height to 900. So there we go. Now, what we need to do is we need to move all of our objects down. So let's drag them down. So rearrange our room for a second. Drag the frog down. And kind of get them roughly, roughly where they were before. And what we can do as well is if we drag these to slightly different starting positions, And what it will mean is that they're kind of they're all at different places, so it won't be as easy to get past them now. 
Now what we need to do in a minute is I want to create a little path, a little safe zone here, okay, in the middle of this area where you get to for a bit of a breather while we reconvene. And then we'll have a second wave of enemies on this side. Now next week we'll make this wave of enemies a little bit harder than the others. But for now, let's just drag a few of these trucks back in up here. And this time will make it really difficult with a couple of those faster kind of trucks. There we go. So Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a very simple path sprite for over here. I'm going to use tiles to do this. So if we click tick over here, we're going to go into our backgrounds option over here. I'm going to create a tileable background. So right click on the background tab and click create background. Go into edit background. And what we're going to do, I know that my frog is 32 pixels by 32, so that's roughly the size that we need our, our background to be. So go to Resize Canvas, and under Resize Canvas you'll see you can set the width and height of your, your tile here. Let's set that to 32 by 32. Click OK. Let's select your paint fill tool over here, your paint bucket. Select a nice grey colour or something, whatever colour you want. Then select your line tool and select a slightly darker grey and then exactly down the middle okay which you can sort out by down here you got two coordinates 14 and 31 you'll see it says these here x and y remember i said x left and right y up and down so over here you'll see if i move my cursor to the right you see the first set of coordinates the x coordinates moves now this is 32 pixels by 32 pixels this so if i go and move it around to 16 by 16 that's the exact center point there now I've marked my center point I'm just gonna drag over there we go and what I'm doing is I'm making a perfect kind of crosshair on there or it was perfect till I messed it up anyway and this is going to be my tile for my pavement so I click little tick to say I've done that and I'm going to name this background pavement tile and then under here neath here you'll see it says users tile set give that a tick over here we can set how big the tile is now I want my tile to be 32 by 32 not 16 by 16 so change that 16 16 to 32 by 32 by typing in there click OK let's make another background let's make a road background this time so click background again right click create background edit background once again, go in, resize that canvas to 32 by 32, click OK. And this one's nice here, I'm just going to use the paint fill tool and set a nice dark kind of grey, as in like a grey top kind of concrete-y kind of colour, horrible concrete. There you go, that will do. And um, we'll just use a little paintbrush tool there. That's a bit big. I'm just going to add a few little inconsistencies in there. There we go. This is me just being an idiot, really. Don't worry, this is nothing important you're missing there. And we'll just rename this Rose and then click uses tile set as well. Change the width and height of your tile over here on the right to 32 by 32, not 16. Click OK. I'm going to rename that road tile uh, because good labeling is always a good idea. So we've now got two tiles that we're going to use as kind of art assets for the background of our game. Let's go back into room one. Double click on room one over here. Let's full screen that. So there's our level there. What we need to do is go into tiles over here and just like you can add sprites, you can add tiles now. We've got two tiles here. We've got the road tile. And if I click this little blue icon like with the sprites, we've got the pavement tile. So first of all, let's set the pavement tile. And what I'm going to do is, if you click and then hold down shift, you can draw on your tiles there. There we go. And that kind of marks our safe zone for our frog. Perfect. Perfect. 
Now let's select our road tile. Once again, left click, hold down shift, and with shift held down and your left mouse button held, you can tile out. Very quickly. There we go. And you'll see we're kind of snapping to the grid that we've got on here anyway, because the grid at the top of the room is currently set to 32 by 32 anyway, which is the size of the tile we've used. So we've just kind of played unwittingly into what Game Maker's default setup for the room snap is anyway. There we go. I'm going to click this little grid off at the top and we can see our level. There we go. Perfect. Excellent, excellent. If we zoom in, we can see even better now. Remember when I made this pavement tile a moment ago and I drew that crosshairs in the centre there? That's because I know that the frog's 32 pixels, so this tile is also 32 pixels, which is roughly the right kind of thing. But because we've centred our frog sprite over here, see little crosshairs in the centre there, so that the centre of the character, which we move about the game world, is the actual centre of the sprite, I knew that we had to draw this as a crosshairs rather than just a black outline so that the the frog would sit nicely within the uh, the pavement kind of tile. Let's click tick. Oh. And click run the game. Let's see. We should have now our, our game with our moving trucks. It should be a bit bigger. And we should have our graphics as well. And we do. And I can move about left and right. And we can start trying to cross that road without the trucks mowing us down. Somehow I failed there, I'm not quite sure. It nearly got me. Close but no tango. So that one there spawning quite close, isn't he? He is. Yeah. Hmm. So we'll sort that out anyway. Perfect. Wonderful stuff. There we go. And eventually I'll be able to get to the other side. Now the only thing we need so far is kind of for our basic prototype of our game is an end of level kind of asset that we need to get to and when we get to that asset the game's kind of over oh I'm useless at this game aren't I? really bad so let's click tick so let's make a nice end of level object so let's go create object and we'll set the sprite to be Oh, first of all, let's make a sprite for it, yeah. Right-click sprite, create sprite, edit sprite, click the little, create a new sprite icon here, like a little white page, set it to 32 by 32, because that seems to be the size of everything we're doing. I'm just going to make this yellow, there you go. It's just a yellow sprite, and we'll call it end of level SPR for sprite, and click center, and click OK. Now for our new object we've just made over here, object 5, call it end of level object. Set the sprite we've just made. Click OK. And then go into your frog object and all we're going to say is add event collision with the end of level. So when we the frog collide with the end of level object, I'm going to go back to our main one tab over here. And we're going to hover our mouse over that middle icon under the rooms submenu here that says next room and click next room and then that will take you to the next level of your game if you've got one so when we the frog collide at the end of a level object go to the next room now we don't have another room yet and we haven't even placed the end of a level object so let's go into our existing room right the way up the top here I'm gonna, from my objects menu I'm going to click and I'm going to drop that in And if I hold down shift and control and left click with my mouse, I can add in whoop, a whole host of end of level objects up there. So if the player hits them, they restart. And we can also, let's tile that as well. So go into your tiles menu and we'll add in the, the pavement tile so that they know that's kind of where they're getting to. Whoop, I messed that up there, didn't I? I made a bit of a, a mistake there. There we go. Perfect. So
so we've got our end of level object there now I don't want to see that horrific yellow sprite because it looks terrible so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go into my end of level object over here and I'm going to untick the visible option there and click OK and I'm going to duplicate that room so we've got a room 2 to go to and but this time just so we know we've got there I'm going to drag my frog over to the right there we go so when we get to the other side of the road we should now be able to hit the end of level object which we won't be able to see it'll load up the next room where my frogger character is going to start on the right hand side instead of the middle like he has here or she has here there you go I'm halfway there will I be able to make it I did, and you'll see, I've started off on the right, there I am, right down the bottom, so this is room 2. There you go, our second level, so, very simple Frogger game, okay, very, very simple. Next week we'll add more to it, but for today, have fun, see what you can do, see how many rooms and levels you can make, try and mess about with the speed of the enemy objects, see what impact that has on gameplay, and remember, at the heart of every good game, is interesting, fun gameplay, so make it fun for your player to play. Thank you for watching and tune in for the next episode of Game Maker for Beginners.